Sup, Brody? I'm Leon, the Paperback Maniac, coming at you on August 10th, 2019, with an absolutely killer horror book haul. As usual, we've got some amazing gems from the likes of Pocket, Leisure, Zebra, Tor, Star. We've got some vintage crime and some vintage smut. And I also have, finally, in my possession, two novels from my top five wish list, including my number one holy grail horror paperback of all time. And I will be showing those books at the end of this video, so stick around for that. Uh, you definitely don't want to miss it. Uh, all right, so without further ado, let's just get to it. Um, we're still in summer, so I thought I'd show a couple more summer books here. Uh, the first one we're looking at is Demon Summer by Elaine Booth Selig. Uh, absolutely beautiful piece of cover art there. Just like the perfect summer horror uh, artwork, right? Uh, this one was published by Pocket in 1979. Yeah, that looks really, really cool. There's the back. And then another kind of summary book. Uh, here we have Sea Cliff by Michael T. Hankemeyer. And this one was also published by Pocket in 1977. Uh, apparently this was first published as The Dark Below. Uh, and it was published by uh, Fawcett Gold Medal in 1975. That one also has an amazing cover, just as good, if not better, actually, than this one. Um, but yeah, I, I really dig, I really dig that. Just that, that 70s artwork, you can't go wrong with it. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, so a couple of summer books. Um, okay, this next one also has an amazing cover. Here we have The Other Side by Diana Henstel, uh, who wrote... Another a novel called Friend, which was famously adapted into the film Deadly Friend by Wes Craven in the mid-80s. Uh, this one was published by Bantam in 1985. Really, really cool uh, font there for the title. And it's the, it's, you have the die cut and absolutely glorious step-back cover art by Lisa Falkenstern right there. That is just so amazing it it warms my heart that uh absolutely love that it's pretty much the best thing i've seen uh in a while really really cool uh just screams 80s right that that cover that artwork okay next we've got a few leisure titles here um first one is fangs uh, this was written by richard forsyth and it was published by leisure in 1985 it's one that I've seen uh, for a while, uh, for you know, a couple of years in the bookshops, but uh, when I ran across this one in really, really good condition, I figured, yeah, this is a leisure title from that period I don't have, so had to get on it. Uh, pretty, pretty cool design, right? And then uh, speaking of fangs, the next one we have here is Hellcat, and this was written by Amanda Kingsley. And it was published by Leisure in 1992. Uh, this uh, sounds like some fun, good old early 90s cat attacks horror, uh, cat horror. And that, that sounds amazing. Um, but it might have like, yeah, but it has a supernatural element. So it's not just like your typical animal attack, uh, you know, book like the rats or uh, something like that. This one has got that kind of trashy leisure supernatural uh, element, which sounds like a blast. Um, and if, you know, I'm, I don't know what, I love like early 90s cat stuff, right? Like I'm thinking sleep, Stephen King's Sleepwalkers, that movie. It's just, it's just fun. Um, okay, next, continuing with leisure, uh, here we have a novel called The Fellowship. And this was uh, written by Aiden and Marie, uh, Mary Romine. Uh, don't know if the, that's a husband and wife writing team. If so, that's awesome. Uh, or, you know, or if they're siblings, I don't know. This one uh, was first published in 84. Uh, and then it, I think it was later reprinted in the later 80s. But uh, pretty striking, uh, you know, artwork there. Oil painting. It's pretty cool. 
that this cover actually reminds me of a painting that uh, when we were teenage, when I was a teenager, my brother, my uh, brother's a few years younger than I am, he found a painting like on the curb, uh, like in our like suburb, and it was like it was very similar to this. It was really like just dark. Uh, and and uh, just like very like somber, it was like this this screaming face, uh, and it was like red, and 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 the background was like red and black, and it was just like it just like conveyed anguish and uh, and just like just sadness and anger and rage. And for some reason, my brother uh, he's like, oh, this is cool, and he just like took it home to our dad's house. And our dad, he was like really into art. He's like, oh, this is great. He's like, yeah, it's an original painting, apparently. And he uh, he put it up on my brother's uh, bedroom walls. So my brother had this like rage filled painting like on his uh, bedroom wall uh, when he was like like 11 or 12. It was actually uh, not like the house that we stayed at. It was the house that we'd visit our dad in. But yeah, pretty funny. Uh, okay, anyway, next up, we've got a book called The Devouring by Douglas D. Hawk. Uh, this was published by, uh, well, it says BMI, but that is, for all intents and purposes, Leisure. Uh, I still don't really know what the difference is. I, I, know, I know that they, they reprinted a bunch of Leisure stuff. Uh, this one came out in uh, 1994, so some more uh, good old uh, 90s Leisure. And you would think that that's a die-cut cover, but it's not. There's nothing, uh, there's no inset uh, there, so yeah, but... 90s Leisure had to give it a shot. All right. Uh, next up, we've got a novelization, uh, adding to my novelization collection, uh, for a movie that I think is very underrated, a really great late 80s uh, kind of fantasy horror novel. This is Warlock. And uh, very excited because it's written by uh, my homie Ray Garten. And uh, this that was adapted um, from a screenplay by uh, D.T. Twohey. And this came out in uh, from Avon in 1989. It's got the uh, you know the movie tie-in uh, thing on the spine there, and uh, yeah, I've actually if you look, this has pretty good reviews for a novelization. Probably, I mean, because it's written by Ray Garden, who's a good writer. But um, yeah, it's, so it's I think it's one of maybe one of the better novelizations, and um, so I'm, I'm excited to, to add this to the collection and eventually read it. I do have Ray Garten, I've got some of his other novelizations, including his uh, novelization for um, Nightmare on Elm Street 4 and 5, uh, so this will be a cool one to add. It seems like he was kind of like one of the go-to guys for those sort of later 80s fantasy horror movies, and this, you know, as I said, this is a, a Warlock is a really good one, if you haven't seen, by the way, I'd recommend it. Um, Okay, next up, we've got a novel called Stage Fright by Claire McNally. And this was published by Tor in um, 1995. And I will admit, the, the, the primary reason I picked this up is because of the absolutely ludicrous inner artwork that is... That is just hilarious to me. Uh, like, like who is that? John Cusack? Like, what's going on there? I mean, you got the black balloons. You just got a ghost, apparently. Uh, yeah, I just kind of chuckled when I saw that. So I was like, all right, you know what? You've sold me. I'm going to check this one out for a couple of bucks. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, next up, I had to grab this, being such a Richard Lehman fan. Uh, this is the um, special definitive edition they say, of Night Show, uh, a novel of Richard Lehman's from um, originally uh, published by New English Library in 1984. It was subsequently published by uh, Tor um, in 1986. And, and actually, uh, that is my favorite edition of this book. It's got like one of my favorite covers ever. But uh, when I saw this, it's got like, you know, it's like packed with special features, like a Blu-ray. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm a fan of Night Show. It's one of the better layman novels that I've read. Uh, probably not, you know, like in my top, top favorites, uh, you know, like a, like a Flesh or The Cellar, but, but pretty damn good, uh, pretty fun. Uh, of course, you know, it deals with uh, a, a demented, sexually deviant psychopath, uh, you know, something we can all relate to. And uh, it, it's just, um, it, it's fun. You know, it's a fun, uh, you know, mid-80s, early 80s uh, layman book. But this one 
you know, when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's a pretty cool cover. Although uh, when you get it and when, you know, when I looked at it up close, definitely a lot crappier and Photoshop-y than, than it first appeared, but, but that's okay. Um, but it has, uh, it has an introduction by Edward Lee, which was pretty interesting. And then, um, it has some, it has some artwork. Okay. So that, that is the, um, art from the tour edition, which I absolutely love. And there, and there is, uh, artwork sprinkled, uh, sprinkled throughout it. And then, uh, it has an afterword by the, the dude who, um, created the, the Richard Lehman website, like in the, the 90s, Lehman, Richard Lehman Kills. Um, it's got some excerpts from A Writer's Tale, uh, where Lehman is kind of like talking about the inception of the novel and, and its creation. And really cool, it has an um, early uh, handwritten draft of the book. The book was, um, went, uh, was first going by the name Chill Master. And so you can actually see uh, Richard Lehman's sort of like... Um, like an early handwritten draft of it. So that's uh, pretty cool. And actually reading the, um, the introduction and the uh, afterward really like kind of made me want to revisit the book. I, I was almost tempted to just like reread it. You could probably read it like super fast. His books are very fast paced, but um, yeah, pretty cool. I don't know if I said that was published by Dark Regions Press in um, uh, 2018, I believe, yeah. All right, next up, we've got Satan's Seductress by Brian McNaughton. Uh, this is the follow-up to uh, Satan's Servant, uh, which is a book I reviewed this summer for Satanic Summer, and I really loved that one. Um, th this is the Star Edition, the UK edition, published in uh, 1981. It was first published in the US by Carlisle, in 1980, but um, I really prefer these star editions to the Carlisle editions. I mean, just look at that sexy ass cover. That is just, that is a cover, right? The Brits, I keep saying this over and over again, they know how to market a book and sell it. Uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm happy. So I had the US uh, Carlisle edition for the first one. I, well, I'm happy that I was able to, to get um, at least one of the uh, the UK editions because this, this is super cool. And uh, yeah, definitely stoked to, uh, to read that one. Okay, uh, speaking of sexy covers, uh, another one we've got here uh, from Zebra. This is Just Before Dark by Jack McClain. Um, and I think Jack McClain, I'm pretty sure he was a pseudonym. Uh, it's escaping me now who the author, what the author's real name is. Uh, leave a comment uh, below if you know that. But um, yeah, this one was published by Zebra in 1990 and uh, absolutely love that cover. Definitely getting uh, T2 Judgment Day vibes, you know, the War of the Machines. Um, yeah, it looks really cool. And this sounds like just like typical Zebra from that period, late 80s, early 90s, when they were really kind of just going overboard, like just like with their novels, they're just so like over the top and gory. Um, not always very good, but uh, always, enter you know, usually entertaining. So uh, definitely was happy to, to pick that one up. All right, next we've got a book called Possession by Christopher, um, God, I keep losing my place, Christopher Starks. And uh, this one was published by Fawcett Gold Medal in 1983. Really cool, really cool cover. Uh, always happy to add to my Fawcett Gold Medal collection. This was one I was unfamiliar with until recently, so happy to, happy to pick that up. Okay, next we've got a book called Hex, uh, another one. Uh, this is maybe my third or fourth novel I own called Hex. I think I showed one even in my last haul, another uh, horror novel titled Hex. This one is written by uh, Robert Curry Ford, and it was published by Playboy Press in 1980. And really, uh, really cool design there. I mean, you know, how, how inventive is that? I absolutely love that. So... Um, yeah, we'll see what this one's only about, or we'll see what this one is about. Um, 
Okay. Oh, now, so these next two books I got in uh, Northern California. So last month, my cousin was kind enough to invite me to her beautiful home in uh, Mill Valley, California, which is in uh, Marin County. And um, originally I was going to go up there with her um, and we were going to, and her husband, and we were going to spend like a, a week or so there. And then her husband had some medical problems and she had to stay with him in their house in Southern California. So she said, hey, why don't you uh, take the keys and go up for a few days, you know, treat it like an Airbnb. Super generous of her. So I was like, hell yeah, all right. So I drove up uh, there and uh, just spent a few days in, in their lovely house up uh, in, in Mill Valley. And when I was up there, uh, one thing that I thought would be fun to do is do a little uh, San Francisco book hunting because San Francisco is like literally like a 10, 15 minute drive away. Uh, so I, uh, you know, did a little research and uh, one day I just like hit like a bunch of bookstores in San Francisco. And uh, I have to say, surprisingly, I was pretty disappointed by the uh, bookstores that they had there. Uh, they, you know, a lot of the bookstores um, didn't find a whole lot that were selling like great, like old, like old used books, right? They had, um, they had some cool looking bookstores, but really there wasn't a whole lot there. But the one bookstore, I did discover one that was probably the best of the bunch. And it was, and it is called, uh, K-O Books, K-A-Y-O. And it is a shop that, uh, has pretty much all just vintage paperbacks. That's really all they have. It's a very small shop. And uh, later I found out that I was really lucky that I actually uh, went there while they were open because they're famously never open. They have odd hours. I mean, even on the sign in front of the door, it says open by appointment or by serendipity. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's very uh, rare that they're just going to be open. If you go, you usually have to call and make an appointment with the, with the owner. Uh, but they were open uh, when I went. It was like 11 a.m. on a Tuesday or something. And... Um, Really, really cool shop. Small, but uh, they had. Now they didn't have a lot of um, the kinds of books that I usually go for, like the the vintage horror from you know the seventies, eighties, and nineties. They had stuff even earl earlier, and it was mostly uh, vintage crime and smut. And so uh, I thought, well, I'm here. I should get at least one of each, right? So I got decided to get kind of like a vintage pulp uh, crime novel and a smut novel. So first off, the crime novel I went with is Blood in Your Eye. And um, yeah, that just really stood out to me. What a cool title uh, for for uh, like a crime, like pulp thriller. This one was uh, written by Robert Patrick Wilmot and it was published by Pocket Books way back in 1953. The, the, the Pocket Paperback came out in 53. It was, looks like it was first published in 1952. But um, yeah, there's the old uh, pocket uh, symbol there, 25 cents. Uh, yeah, I thought this was, was pretty cool. So I was like, all right, you know what? When in Rome, let's, uh, let's do it. Let's get that one. And then uh, for the smut one, and now I was debating if I should show you guys this, but um, I, know you, I know everyone who's watching this video is like average age. I've seen my analytics. Uh, you're, you're all of age. So this is... Uh, this is from the Hot Cherries series uh, of, of paperbacks. This is Hot Cherries number uh, 128. Now, just to give you an idea, uh, and when I went into this store, by the way, and I was looking at all of the like the vintage sex novels, this was like a huge thing. I mean, and it makes sense. I mean, back in the day, you know, there was no porn, so what were people going to do? You know, if you didn't have video. You had you had books, and this was probably the easiest way to to do that. So, um, but yeah, just the sheer amount. I mean, you could straight up like someone could start a YouTube channel just on their collection of vintage smut, uh, and and I think I'm going to do that. So look out for that in 2020. <laughs> no, um, but uh, okay. So this is Hot Cherries number 128, Fashion Executive, <laughs> Fashion Executive. There it is. Um, there is no. Uh, author attributed here, although there is a about, there is an about the author, which I can read. Um, this is what it says for the about the author. Wanton, ambitious, exquisite Donna Valento uses her precious body and superb sexpertise to lure a legion of lovers. 
a career girl in the corporate jungle of the Garment District, working on New York's famed 7th Avenue, Fashion Avenue, Donna climbs the company pyramid, using as stepping stones her male and female lovers. In her memoirs, now available at last, she unveils the naked truth behind the industry, where the makers of women's clothes spend their time trying to take those clothes off women and girls and make them. But our narrator is nobody's fool, and she uses her body and her wits to make her way in this all-too-wicked world. An introductory chapter, well, I'm not going to read the rest of that. Okay, so, um, yeah, but what I was going to say, yeah, there's no uh, back cover synopsis. What you do get are some ads. Uh, you can take a look at that. You get some great vintage ads. Ooh, I can't even show that one. No, that's, that's not good. Um, I'll show this one, though. Uh, pretty, I mean, these are just fascinating, right? Like, artifacts of a bygone era. And this was published by Star Distributors, you won't believe when this was published. Uh, this, it says first printing 1983. This, this thing is from, I thought it was way older than that, but uh, they were publishing these books like in the 80s, which is funny. But um, yeah, I had to, uh, and like I said, they had dozens and dozens of these, hundreds of these uh, probably, uh, these old sex books. So had to get at least one. All right. Uh, we got just a few more here, a um, couple more. The next one is The Queen of Hearts by Kay Dobson, Dobkin, sorry. And this was published by Dell in 1982. Apparently, uh, well, it seems to be Alice in Wonderland horror, <laughs> and that, that's intriguing. Um, yeah, the, let's see what the synopsis says. The Queen of Hearts is looking for Alice. The Queen of Hearts wants Alice to play cards with her. The Queen of Hearts wants Alice to come for tea. But Alice doesn't feel well. Alice hears voices. Alice has a visitor at night, a man who takes her picture. Alice has cut the head off a little sparrow. She has cut off the heads of all her butterflies. And now the head of Daryl Heinrich is lying in a pool of blood, and he is trying to speak to her. What is the matter with Alice? That sounds kind of interesting, so I don't know. Um, thought I would, uh, thought I'd check that out. All right, next up, we've got a novel called Watchdog by Faith Sullivan. Uh, this book was published by Signet. Uh, this edition came out in 1983. Uh, it was first uh, published in hardcover, it looks like, in 1982. Uh, definitely has that early 80s aesthetic that is uh, really awesome. All right, and then uh, next we have Sins of the Blood. Yet another in the Del Abyss line. I'm constantly running across these Del Abyss books that I'm unfamiliar with. Uh, this one was um, written by Chris, uh, Christine Catherine Rush, uh, and it was published in uh, 1994 by Del Abyss. So thought I would uh, thought I would check it out when I saw it in the bookstore. All right. Now, finally, we're going to get to my uh, holy grail items. And in fact, I'm just going to show you now uh, what it really is uh, seriously like been my number one uh, holy grail item. The book that has been like at the top of my wish list super rare. Uh, there were only 500 copies ever printed. And, you know, yeah, you, you can't find them really like in used bookstores. Um, and, you know, they are pretty expensive. I actually did pay more for this probably than I should have. Uh, although in my defense, I had a, I had like a little bank of money in PayPal, like from stuff that I had been selling. And I thought, okay, well, you know what? I'll uh, treat myself. It's not coming out of my, you know, checking account. I'm not charging the credit cards. So, uh, so my number one holy grail item of all time, guys, is Ninth and Hell Street by Chaz Ballin. Now, I have talked about Chaz Ballin in the past. He is an absolute legend uh, when it comes to splatter horror. He, he was a writer. He was a critic. 
Um, he's famous for some like great uh, articles that he had written in Fangoria and especially Gore Zone magazine in the 80s. Um, he had a series in the 80s called The Gore Score where he would uh, review and r kind of like rate um, like, you know, splatter flicks. Uh, the man definitely knew his stuff. He was also a screenwriter. Uh, sadly, I don't think he ever had a script produced. Um, but uh, he, he was also a pioneer in the uh, genre in genre self publishing. Uh, and actually, this is uh, a self published book, and he actually designed this. I think he was also a graphic artist. Uh, this was published in uh, 1989 by Chunk Blow Press. <laughs> you know his his press, and Chunk Blow is actually comes from a phrase that he had coined, uh, "blowing chunks," which I think is just great. Uh, and I actually use that sometimes. Um, and yes, this it's a very slim book. But it is apparently one of the, um, you know, top sort of like just uh, gore fests. Uh, people compare it, up, you know, they put it up there with uh, books like Chainsaw Terror uh, by Sean Hudson, which he had written under a pseudonym. And um, yeah, it just sounds, it's something that I've been so curious about. Um, so here on the back, uh, so you see we've got uh, blurbs from like Tony Timpone from Fangoria, uh, Gunnar Hansen. We've got the um, Eric Kaiden, who I believe was the owner of the famous uh, Hollywood book and poster uh, shop, now uh, now closed, that used to be on Hollywood Boulevard. And um, yeah, this uh, is issue number 108 from of 500 uh, with a signature uh, from Mr. Chaz Ballin. And um, yeah, I'm so pumped to read this. It's super short. It is like a hundred and under 160 pages. Um, apparently, has to do with like like a religious cult in Laguna Beach, uh, California, who um, caused a bunch of mayhem on Easter Sunday. Sounds absolutely incredible. Uh, very very excited. I actually I believe the person I purchased this from uh, on eBay. The name looked familiar. He may be a viewer of this channel actually. Todd B. Uh, Todd, if you're watching this, thanks buddy. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, as I said, I did, I, I did pay more for this than I should have, but it's something that I've wanted for many years and, uh, you know, I had the, had the money in PayPal, so I thought I'd do it. And then after I got that, I was like in the glow of Chaz Ballin and, and sadly Chaz Ballin, uh, who has since passed away, he only published, I think like three pieces of fiction, uh, like total. And the most famous is this ninth and hell street. He had also like a short story that was published in a, like a chat book, another self published chat chat book in the eighties, which is like, doesn't exist. I mean, I've never seen it online anywhere, but the other, the only other sort of like very, very slim novella he published, I also decided to get, I thought, why not knock out, you know, two birds with one stone. Uh, and that is director's cut. And, uh, this one, he published uh, in 1995, and this came out through an indie publisher called Blackest Heart Books. And um, this one's even shorter than uh, Ninth and Hell Street. It looks like it's 82 pages, but uh, sounds amazing. This is him kind of like uh, making a comment on uh, uh, the horror industry in Hollywood. Uh, it, it like takes place at the screening of like a like a gory horror flick and of course mayhem ensues during the screening and uh sounds really awesome so both uh both of these books ninth and hell street and and director's cut both super rare uh this oh director's cut by the way it was uh issue this one is issue 465 out of 500 there is a little cool little card that you get and you get the uh, the signature there as well. So yeah, both of these only had a 500 print run. They're pretty obscure, um, and uh, yeah, and I'm I'm just really excited to read his horror fiction because reading, I, you know, I have a copy of the Gore Score uh, compendium of, of like a, a lot of those reviews he did, and and I've read uh, countless articles that he uh, published in uh, Gore Zone magazine and Fangoria. The dude was uh, a connoisseur of splatter he knew his stuff and i'm sure that these books uh from what i've heard especially um ninth and hell street i hear it's basically like straight up like fulci 
uh, Italian horror levels of gore. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to read them. And, and hopefully I'll read them and, and I'll review them for you guys. So, uh, yeah, that is, uh, that, that's it. That's everything, guys, for today. I uh, hope, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you uh, saw some stuff that, you know, piqued your fancy, looked interesting. Um, if you've read any of these books, you know, as always, feel free to drop a line below. Let me know. And, um, yeah, hope everyone uh, has a good rest of the day. Uh, check back soon for more videos, more book reviews, and all that stuff. I will see you later. Peace out.